you were born, you are nurtured up to whatever, you're six, then you get sent in the kindergarten and school, and by the time you're 18, you come out and you go to college. By the time you get out of college, you get a job, and then you retire with whatever, 65 or mm -hmm. so, and then you enjoy your retirement somewhere at a hot place, right? That, that's been the model of the past. It's, that's not working. That is absolutely not working anymore, and in every respect. Go to school, get good grades, get into college, become a professional, and work your way up the corporate ladder until you can retire with your savings or a pension. That's the plan for a lot of people, and despite what a lot of hustle bros on the internet might tell you, Now that's f***ing insane. It's a good plan if you can stick to it. 9 to 5 jobs are picked on a lot, usually by people that need a way to sell a get-rich-quick scheme. The standard 40-year professional career has let millions of people enjoy very comfortable lives free from the stress that comes with being in business for themselves, but that is all coming to an end. In just the last 24 months, we have experienced quiet quitting, quiet hiring, work shortages, and labor shortages. What a lot of people aren't talking about, though, is how this is just the result of companies still trying to make outdated business models work in an age where workers can demand more from their employers. The establishment of the 40-year career is crumbling, and there are some employers and employees that are doing a great job taking advantage of it, and there are others that are suffering. The first trend is that despite pervasive stories about hustle culture and people making partner before the age of 30 while also building an outside business that dropships physical NFTs through the MySpace storefront, the average worker is not grinding. They are getting less ambitious. A Wall Street Journal article surveyed a range of businesses in demanding fields that are usually staffed by ambitious workers like law, business consulting, and marketing. The companies all reported challenges with getting their employees to go above and beyond, which is really corporate speak for working late and coming in on the weekends. A law firm told the Wall Street Journal reporters that typically they would have no problem getting junior associates to do extra hours to make sure time-sensitive work was completed for their demanding clients. But now, new associates have started saying no to working weekends and late nights, which is forcing the partners to bring on more staff and do the extra hours themselves. Which, let me say this. As a former investment banking associate that has put in my fair share of weekends to suck up to a partner, this is one of the most beautiful things I have ever heard. It's wonderful. It's marvelous. I'm squeaked. This kind of thing would never usually happen at places like this because elite legal and financial firms have an up or out policy with new associates, which means that within their first two years, they get promoted to senior associate or they get asked kindly but firmly to leave the firm. Unfortunately for the partners, they can't afford to get rid of new graduates because of worker shortages, so they have lost the threat of termination and the reward of promotion isn't as appealing as it once was either. In the same article, an insurance firm told the Wall Street Journal of the difficulties they had been having with getting people to accept promotions. Managers often had to coax their staff into accepting more senior positions because the staff were preferring to stay in their current roles where they could manage their work-life balance. When workers are more afraid of being promoted than being fired, it's a clear sign that things are changing. So it's time to learn how money works to see why the 40-year career is dead and why that might be a good thing. This week's lesson was made possible by Course Careers, which is honestly the perfect partner for this topic. The 40-year career might be dead, but it's ushering in a new style of career that you can be prepared for with Course Careers. If you want to start a career in the technology industry, but don't have previous experience or a degree, then Course Careers is here to help. They're replacing college as the modern way people are starting careers, and it's so simple. All you do is go through an affordable online course where you learn everything required to actually do the job. Then they help you land a position by partnering with companies who drop their degree and experience requirements to hire course career graduates in entry-level positions and internships. Checking out some of their stories of people like Nyla, who went from being a 19-year-old Starbucks barista to making over $60,000 in a remote technology sales career, or Ben, who went from being a college dropout working as a middle school janitor to making 80 k as a tech sales rep working fully remote. Go to CourseCareers.com, link in bio, to sign up for their free introductory course, where you'll learn exactly how you can start a technology career without a degree or previous experience. Remember to use code WORKS50 for $50 off their full course. In 2020, millions of people who were never allowed to before started working from home. By avoiding the distractions of the modern office, a lot of people realized that the tasks that they were completing as a part of their jobs were that of what the anthropologist David Graeber would consider complete bullshit. Most of the office jobs had workers performing tasks that fell into one of the following categories outlined in the book by the same name. Flunkies who only served to make their superiors feel important, i.e. receptionists, administrative assistants, and doormen. <sighs> you don't need someone to hold the door for you when everybody is working from home, and a sales platform switching board to do most of the day-to-day -day work of a receptionist. 
Box tickers who only exist to create the appearance something useful is being done, like creating company newsletters or organizing company culture events. And taskmasters, who exist to make themselves look busy by standing over their subordinates to keep them on task, but only ever end up distracting those workers or slowing them down because they themselves don't want to look like they have nothing left to do. Most jobs in the modern office involve doing some of these tasks, but by working from home, there's less need for them to exist. A lot of employees very quickly found out that they did not need 40 hours or more in the office every week to get their work done. They could just finish it in half the time, and all the other hours were wasted on pointless meetings that could have been an email and any of the other bullshit tasks that modern workers partake in. Work from home did not get rid of the goons, who were people like corporate lawyers who only exist to protect the company from other goons or the duct tapers, who are the people that spend all of their time fixing the problems of everybody else. So if you want bullshit job security, try and make yourself one of these. For the employees that found a whole lot of extra hours in their day, they now had to decide what to do with it. An internal survey of 3,000 workers conducted by the software firm Qualtrics has shown what it was that people decided to do. 40% said that work had become less important to them in the past three years, and that they would prefer to spend the extra hours exercising, cleaning their home, going for a walk, or sleeping when they had the opportunity to. 25% said that work had become more important to them, and that they would look for additional responsibilities to take on in the spare hours. Most of all, 36% said that their career ambitions had waned, and that the typical progression of climbing the corporate ladder had become less important to them over the past three years. Those are some pretty smart workers, and it was creating the same problem that the prestigious legal firms and investment banks were complaining about too. Most people are no longer willing to work extra hours and accept additional stress to chase a promotion, and a lot of workers won't even accept a promotion if they are offered one because climbing the corporate ladder is not as appealing as it once was. There are four reasons that business analysts have identified as the leading causes of this trend. The most damaging to traditional corporate culture is that people no longer see the financial benefits of moving up the corporate ladder. Typically, managers and senior executives earn more than their subordinates, but modern salespeople, tech workers, and tradespeople are bucking that trend, especially in high-demand industries. A lot of workers are preferring to reskill into an in-demand role, where they can earn variable compensation based on the overtime hours they put in and the performance they achieve. People with experience in tech, pharmaceuticals, or finance could become managers, or they could cross-skill into sales and become salaried plus commission reps. They will get a lower base wage, but even average performers can earn $250,000 to $500,000 a year in commissions, putting them well ahead of any mid-level manager in the same industry. Doing a role where they are not responsible for the performance of any subordinates also means that they are free from the stress of dealing with workers who don't want to put in any overtime or work towards getting a promotion. Instead, they are only responsible for themselves and their work. If they want to make a lot more money one month, they can hustle like crazy and work on closing more sales or doing more overtime. If they want more work-life balance, they won't be letting down a team beneath them. Skilled, non-managerial roles in certain fields and sales roles are also safer during financial slowdowns as compared to middle managers. A company can operate without team leaders, but it can operate if nobody is selling its product. For young workers who have lived through two big downturns during their careers, a job that is safe during bad times is more valuable than a job that pays a little bit more. Some really cunning workers have made junior jobs significantly more lucrative than managerial jobs by simply working two of them. Working from home has kicked off a new trend that is particularly popular with tech workers who work two full-time jobs with two companies simultaneously and take home two salaries. Entire online forums have sprung up in the past two years for workers to discuss this practice and share tips and tricks on how to find jobs that can be done in parallel and keep up with the workload once they've secured the roles. Some people on these forums claim to be working as many as five jobs simultaneously by committing 60 to 70 hours a week in their home offices. Just one job can be a lot of work, but highly experienced employees have claimed that the workload and stress of working two or three junior development roles is still less than working one senior development or team lead role. For motivated workers that want to put in the hours, the multiple job route is more financially rewarding, and it provides them additional job security because if they get laid off from one job, they still have one or two salaries to fall back on. Ever since COVID started, what we've seen is that candidates are really only taking remote or hybrid jobs. To be competitive in this market, companies really do have to be either hybrid at the minimum or provide remote work opportunities. Reason number two is that modern workers have more entrepreneurial ambitions than the generations that came before them. The biggest selling point for young workers in the most prestigious firms in the country are not career advancements, but instead the exit opportunities. 
From my own experience at two different investment banks, most junior bankers do not want a career in investment banking, no matter how well compensated some senior bankers can be. Most banking analysts only want to work in the industry for two to five years and use that job experience to qualify as a role as a financial executive like a CFO for a medium-sized company or work in private equity or hedge funds. Or they want to start their own company armed with the detailed industry knowledge on how to raise capital from investors and structure a business for growth. The entrepreneurial spirit is not only alive and well amongst finance bros, the rate at which people report wanting to start their own business has shot up to its highest level ever. There were a record 5.4 million business ID numbers created in 2021, with 2022 expected to have broken that record further. Sometimes entrepreneurship is not all that it's cracked up to be, and I would encourage caution to anybody thinking of giving up a stable 9 to 5 job to start their own business. But smart decision or not, people are doing it. Caution be damned. The third reason people are unwilling to chase promotions is because it ironically makes it harder for them to progress their career. This is a tricky one, so follow along here. The best way for someone who only wants to work the 9 to 5 job to increase their salary is to change companies every two years. Employees that stick with their companies for longer than that end up earning a mind-blowing 50% less than their peers who were less loyal and were constantly shopping around for better offers from different employers. The real trick is to do this while maintaining a good relationship with the companies and managers they move between. Getting a promotion in a company resets the clock on when a smart employee can switch companies without leaving a bad impression with their current employer. If someone is planning to make the scheduled job hop, but they are only a month into their new role after receiving a promotion, they are unlikely to get a good reference from their outgoing company, because now that company has to find a new employee for a job that was only just filled. A bad reference from a frustrated ex-manager will make it harder to land the new job and negotiate a competitive salary. If the employee just stays in their current role and passes up any promotions, they can rely on a good reference from the same manager that they worked under the entire time. The fourth reason that people are no longer willing to work for a promotion is simply because they don't want them. More people are choosing mental health and free time over money and opportunity, because being removed from the corporate bubble has made them realize that there is much more to life than making as much money as they possibly can. A lot of young workers have become disenfranchised because they realize no matter how hard they work, they are going to struggle to achieve traditional financial goals like buying a house and having a normal retirement, so they are seeking out easy work and pursuing alternative lifestyles like video gaming or low-budget travel by living in a converted van. As more workers learn of these four reasons to reject their traditional career promotions, companies are going to have to face some big problems. Promotions are the biggest incentives that large companies have to motivate non-executive level employees to do more than the bare minimum to not get fired. The promise of a promotion, if targets are met, is often cheaper than performance-based bonuses. Some companies pay their executives extremely high salaries, not because of the hard work they do, but because they want all of their employees to work like crazy for the chance that they too one day could be a fat cat. Of digital marketing and you get offered a promotion that's in IT because digital marketing has a lot of technology skill, technical skills, then should I step out into IT if my goal is to be the CMO? And the answer is no, right? So if it's gonna take you off your long-term path, you don't want to do that. If people don't want the promotions or see that they will never make it to the level where they make more money for less work, then the whole system stops working and it spells the end of the traditional career. Workers have also realized that hard work alone will never make them a CEO, and becoming a highly compensated chief executive requires a totally different strategy from what you might expect, starting with an engineering degree instead of a business degree people would expect. If you want to find out the other six steps that 80% of Fortune 500 CEOs took to land their multi-million dollar roles, then go and watch my video on how to become a CEO. A special thanks again to Course Careers, who's preparing people for this new type of career for making it possible for everybody to keep on learning how money works. Did you hear me? I said I quit, Monty! And since I quit, I can do anything I want. Is that so? Oh, I hope I haven't upset you. Bongo head! Hey! Hey!